Hey, superstars, it's your best friend Scott, and it is time for a commission video. Today I'm painting Roy Campanella from my best bud Jesse over at Think Blue 77. And this one's kind of special for a couple of reasons. One, it's the first commission that I've completed as a full time sports ball artist. And two, which is really the same as one, but it kind of reinforced how doing this full time is going to be beneficial to me and to you guys waiting for commissions. And I'm not really making any sense just yet, but bear with me, I'll give it a try. Before I go into details though, I want to give Jesse a big virtual hug and thank you for being so patient. I started this thing way back in October and it took me this long to finish it. You might be able to see my hair grow quite a bit in this video, but it wasn't until the last couple of weeks that I was really able to focus and concentrate and get it all done. So just being able to adjust my schedule and paint for a few hours every morning without any distractions has been really, really awesome. And I plan on doing analog art every day for the foreseeable future this way. I'm very, very excited. But enough about my work habits, back to Jesse. Jesse is a huge Dodger fan and he has an amazing collection, not just of cards, but some really sweet memorabilia. And it's really cool knowing that this is going to such a good home. Uh, Jesse really wanted more of the stadium in the painting, including Vince Scully up in the press box. But my job is to kind of rein the clients in a little bit. It happens all the time, so I'm not picking on Jesse here. But I have to make sure what the client wants and what's going to look good as a piece of art are, are both in the same ballpark. Pardon the pun there. And so we stuck to just Campy here with the image they used on so many of his baseball cards. And I was especially inspired by the 1951 Bowman cards because I just love those cards. Hence the black outline surrounding Campy. There were quite a few fun coincidences that occurred while I was working on this. Uh, the first was that I randomly won a contest with 3D 80s Kid where I won a 1957 Topps Roy Campanella card. And normally I'd have John send that card to someone who, who would appreciate it more than I would, but I thought it would be a neat keepsake for this project. And then uh, I tend to have longer YouTube videos playing during my painting sessions sometimes. I was watching Two Guys One Hobby and uh, Johnny Boggs was trying to recall which card supposedly had Vince Scully in the stands in the background. And I'm painting this and I'm yelling at the TV that it was the 51 Bowman Roy Campanella, but I don't think he heard me. Uh, immediately after that, I watched Dan's Vintage Baseball PC where Dan was interviewing a Roy Campanella super collector, Stacy at Passion for Baseball on Twitter. So that was really cool, getting to learn a lot of stuff about Campy and his cards that I didn't know while I was painting this. And then the very next day, Drew at Clean Cheap Shots was highlighting players in the 1953 top set. And he also gave a great history lesson on Campy. So I was like immersed in this whole Campy culture while I was painting this, it was fantastic. I said earlier that I was inspired by Campy's 1951 Bowman card, but I did keep the background more true to the photo than the card because this is a lot larger scale than that little baseball card. And uh, there is a lot of information and detail in those stands back there. So I had to keep the color kind of muted so I wouldn't compete too much with Campy in the foreground. And there's some artsy fartsy insights for y'all. Super brief history on Campy because I'm an expert now. He was a heck of a ball player, eight time All Star, three time MVP, obviously a Hall of Famer, only the second black player inducted actually, and he was one of the best catchers of all time. Uh, he got a start in the Negro Leagues, and you can just imagine what his career would have been like had he played in the majors the entire way. Um, he famously got in an automobile accident on his way home from the liquor store that he owned during the offseason in 1958, which left him paralyzed and ended his career. But really, other than that, I guess he was just a fantastic person who was revered by everyone he played with.
All right, there's Campy for you. Not really for you, but for Jesse. But I was happy to share this with you all and very honored that Jesse entrusted me to do this for him. It was a really fun piece. So thank you again for your patience and your trust, Jesse. And of course, thank you guys for watching. Love your hobby. Make it unique to you. And we'll see you on the next one.